Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at imaging of a teenager who presented with neck pain. Patient underwent CT examination for further evaluation. As you scroll through the CT images from inferior to superior direction, you can see bilateral palatine tonsils are enlarged and they are touching the ula, almost giving the appearance of kissing tonsils. On the right hand side, we can also see a hypodense collection along the superior peritonsillar region. There were no other signs of inflammatory changes. Bilateral cervical vasculature was patent. On the coronal images, as I scroll, you can see similar findings. Bilateral palatine tonsillas are enlarged and they are meeting in the midline, giving the kissing tonsil appearance. And along the superior peritonsillar region on the right side, we see a rim enhancing collection. Constellation of findings is consistent with peritonsillar abscess. There were no findings to suggest septic thrombophlebitis or parapharyngeal inflammatory changes. This is a nice review article I found in the literature which goes through the pathophysiology of peritonsillar abscess. Up until recently, I assumed peritonsillar abscess was natural progression of acute exudative tonsillitis leading to cellulitis with peritonsillar abscess formation. Recently, I came across a concept where they say peritonsillar abscess is actually inflammation of minor salivary glands in the peritonsillar region. There is collection of minor salivary glands along the superior aspect of the tonsil called as Weber's gland. These are collection of salivary glands at the junction of tonsil with the soft palate. Secretions from this Weber's gland drain on the surface of the tonsil via a duct which helps in digestion of food particles trapped in the tonsillar crepes. When there is a acute tonsillitis, these ducts can get inflamed and obstructed, which can lead to the formation of abscess within the minor salivary glands. Given the location of the Weber's gland, this would explain why peritonsillar abscess is usually seen at the junction of the tonsil and soft palate along the superior aspect this would also explain why peritonsillar abscess can also be seen even in patients who have undergone tonsillectomy. It is important to differentiate peritonsillar abscess from tonsillar abscess. Peritonsillar abscess is much more common than tonsillar abscess. As we saw in peritonsillar abscess, there is rim enhancing fluid adjacent to an enlarged tonsil classically along the superior aspect. Whereas in tonsillar abscess, there is a central fluid collection within an enlarged tonsil. Peritonsillar abscess is treated with incision and drainage followed by antibiotics, whereas tonsillar abscess is treated with antibiotics alone. Very rarely they can do incision and drainage on tonsillar abscess, but talking to the ENT surgeons, they prefer not to do incision and drainage in patients with tonsillar abscess. I hope you found this video to be informative. Thanks for your attention.